Welcome everyone to the mechanics class. Um, as you know, in the last class, uh, we last two classes rather from last two classes, we are studying the kinetics part. Um, in kinetics, we understood the concept of uh, D. Lambert's principle. Uh, in D. Lambert's principle, we understood what is inertia force and uh, why we can't apply the equations of equilibrium. And uh, in order to apply uh, in equations of the equilibrium, uh, what we can do. Um, and uh, we have to create an inertia force, which is an artificial force, and then we call it as a dynamic equilibrium condition and we apply the equations of equilibrium to solve the problem. Then we studied the concept of work. We studied the concept of energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, and uh, we studied work energy principle. We also studied the law of conservation of uh, energy. After that, uh, we studied the uh, momentum, the concept of momentum, law of conservation of momentum. We also studied um, impulse, the concept of impulse, and uh, then the relationship between impulse and momentum, and we call it as a impulse momentum principle. OK. And uh, we have solved um, problems on it. OK. Um, in today's session, um, so if you remember in the last class, mainly problems we solved are on collision or the impact, right? Um, so in today's session, uh, we will be solving questions on uh, um, the other parts, okay, like uh, of the kinetics, that is uh, D.L. Lambert's principle and all, okay? So this session will be uh, mainly today's session will be your problem solving session, okay? Uh, <clears throat> because we understood the theoretical background already. So we'll start with a variety of problems and uh, try to understand it. Okay. So in this session, I expect you to work on it. Okay. Mm, I will be giving you the question. I'll wait for some time so that you can think on uh, the problems and then come up with the solution. Okay, and um, if you are not able to do, then I will definitely help with you. Okay, and uh, after this, um, maybe tomorrow uh, or in the next week session, we will um, study two remaining topics uh, of our syllabus. Um, uh, we have one topic is virtual work that is left and Lagrange theorem. Yeah, I guess um, these are the two topics. Uh, uh which are remaining let just me check um in the syllabus once again to make sure um yeah mm, yeah the virtual work uh, the virtual work topic is remain and lagrange equation yes so these are the two um topics uh, which are remained and uh, Mostly, I think we will cover it in uh, next week's session. Um, and today and tomorrow, we will understand some questions on the, um, uh, we'll solve some questions on this kinetics part. Okay. And at the end, after completing this uh, topics, uh, we'll have one uh, session dedicated for, let's say, practice where we will where i will collect some more questions from um, statics as well and uh, then uh, from dynamics and then we'll study it at the end okay um, so with that let's start solving some questions a 50 kg wooden block Rest on a rough surface. Whose coefficient of friction is 0.4. Determine the acceleration produced. Determine the acceleration produced. Due to application of force P.
which is equal to 250 Newton full stop. So this is uh, the first part of the question. Mm. And the second part of the question is also determined. Also determined. The velocity of the block after three seconds. After three seconds. Um, but this is the block and uh, we have this kind of force 250 okay to solve this um, I'll wait for um, two minutes you can solve it and tell me the answer okay and uh, post your answers in the chat group so that I can see it. Okay, so they are asking you the acceleration and the velocity. Zero. Pranjul, why uh, zero? It's a bad mistake, sorry, sorry, it's zero. Okay, no problem. Okay. Okay, Vikas is mentioning one, yeah. Um, uh, could you please uh, share the accurate answer uh, with let's say two decimals at least two to three decimals yes 1.08 is correct mm -hmm. see um, we know that uh, this um, body will be moving uh, with the application of force of uh, 250 newton and we cannot apply the equation of the equilibrium because uh, it is accelerating in this direction. Okay. So in order to apply the equations of the equilibrium, if you apply an imaginary force of MA mass times the acceleration, inertia force, then we can apply equations of equilibrium in the horizontal direction. In vertical direction, we already have balance that is weight is acting downward and normal reaction is acting upward. Okay. So uh, we can say and frictional force, of course, opposite to the direction of the motion. Weight is equal to normal reaction, and that is equal to 50 into 9.81 Newton. Um, so frictional force here is um, mu times n, that is equal to 0.4 times 50 into 9.81 Newton. And uh, if you apply the equations of the equilibrium in horizontal direction, the P force, which is 250, 250 Newton, will be equal to MA plus frictional force. Uh, M we know that is uh, 50. Acceleration we are supposed to calculate. And plus frictional force is 0.4 into 50 into 9.81. Okay. And if you solve it, you will get the acceleration 1.076 meter per second square. Okay. What about the velocity? Velocity after three seconds, anyone? Uh, no velocity is. Yeah, 3.22 is the correct answer um, because, you know, body is initially at rest and it is, um, you can clearly see rests on a horizontal surface and uh, with this acceleration, it is moving afterwards. So initial velocity of the body is zero. Okay. So, you know, V is equal to U plus AT. 
with which acceleration it is moving that also we know we just calculated so 0 plus 1.076 into um, 3 you will get 3.228 meter per second square meter per second okay i hope it's clear <coughs> okay anyone have any doubt yeah 3.2 something is the correct answer yeah maybe you are too far Okay, um, let me give you another question, a different problem mm, with a pulley, two masses of 100 kg and 40 kg are suspended by rope passing over a pulley. Or a rotating pulley. Full stop. Find the tension in the rope okay. and the acceleration of the system. The acceleration of the system shown in the figure. Okay. Okay. System looks something like this. We have um, first of all a pulley. Okay. And uh, one is the M1, let's say. Another one is uh, M2. Okay, uh, let's call M1 as 40 kgs, M2 is 100 kgs. There, yeah, these are the two masses which are applied um, on the both sides. Okay, uh, and let's say the R is the radius of the pulley. Try to solve this question. They are not mentioned any friction here, so you can ignore it. So assume that this is a frictionless pulley because it's nothing mentioned, so you have to assume it as a frictionless pulley. So two things again here, the part one is tension and uh, the part two is um, acceleration. Yeah, tension is correct. Um, some of you already answered it's, uh, it is 560.4 Newton. What about the acceleration? Four point two, right? Correct, because <clears throat> so let's try to understand this um, two free revolver diagrams, and then things will be more clear to you, so that you can solve it um, if you are not able to. Okay, so in first case, we have W one, which is um, nine point eight one into forty. So let's call it as W1 and in second case we have W2 100 into 
and we have tension in the pulley and the same tension will be here because it's a frictionless pulley otherwise you know the formula t2 by t1 by t2 that is or t max by t minimum is equal to e to the power mu theta okay um, but that is not the case here mu is zero so e to the power zero means one that's why t max and t minimum are same so we don't have any high tension side and low tension side okay since our assumption is a frictionless pulley but if it is not there then you have to consider it and problem becomes little bit difficult one more extra step will get added into it okay so the obviously the the 100 kg block is heavier so it will start accelerating in the direction so as the motion of the second block is downward i will say m2a will be acting in upward direction okay the mass m1 is moving upward because of the less weight right um so m1a will be acting in and downward direction okay so tension can be written as okay tension can be written as uh, m1a plus w1 okay and uh, here for this uh, um, in for this figure, how we calculate the tension? Tension is equal to W2 minus M2A. Is it correct? Till this, are you um, getting it? How I have written the equation? Here, just by looking into arrows, you can say the tension will be equal to W1 plus M1A. And here, the M2A is in the direction of tension. So that's why I'm subtracting it to the from W2. Okay. So both both of them has to be same. M1 is 40 into the acceleration plus W1 is um, how much? 40 into 9.81. That is equal to W2, which is 100 minus sorry, 100 into 9.81 minus 100 into acceleration. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think if you solve these two, you will get the answer, right, for the acceleration. Um, just check if this equation gives you the answer. Yeah, I think this should, if you equate these two, equation number one and equation number two, you should get acceleration is equal to 4.20, okay, meter per second square. And if you just put into any of this equation, so for example, if you put in the first equation, tension will be equal to 40 into 4.2 plus 40 into 9.81. Okay, you will get 560.5 something. Okay, Newton has a tension. Is that clear? So, this problem became easy just because we don't have um, uh, the friction in the pulley. Um, otherwise, um, let's say the, if I say this is not a frictionless pulley, the scenario will look something like this. Okay, so um, this will move down, this will go up. So basically, um, it will be moving in this direction. So arrow will indicate the high tension side. So here you will say T max or T1, let's say T max, for example. And here you will have T minimum. Okay, and you know T max by T minimum. 
is good e to the power mu theta whatever will be the coefficient of friction they'll give you have to put it here uh, we have studied these kind of problems before and uh, theta will be the um, angle of wrap angle or how much angle the pulley is uh, covered by the rope so in this case maybe 180 degree and uh, you have to put it into the radian so theta will be pi in this case okay and uh, mu is a coefficient of friction so put this you will get a relationship one more and then <clears throat> basically uh, you you will have um, two okay two equations and two unknowns one equation is with a and uh, another equation will be with uh, either t max or t minimum so you will get you can uh, definitely get that answer as well okay so that is the only difference uh, just one extra step you will you'll have to make whenever the friction is considered okay any doubt in this problem or uh, this friction concept okay if no doubt um, then i'll take uh, I'll go to the next slide and give you another one. Okay, little bit different question than what we have studied till now. Uh, a train, 2000 kilonewton weight, having speed of 90 kmph is allowed to travel against a braking force against a braking force okay oh, at 10% of weight Full stop. Find the distance Find the distance it will cover before coming to rest Before coming to rest on a level track assume friction of 5% of weight okay so you have to calculate the distance here is in meters okay <clears throat> Let me help you out with the problem by drawing a figure. So we have one um, train. Okay, for example, this is the train. And uh, the weight of the train is 2000 kilonewton. Okay, it is running with the speed of um, 90 kmph okay it's allowed to travel again as the breaking force of 10% um, of weight so the breaking force is applied okay fb um, you have to decide the direction i'll not tell as of now um, so breaking force of 10% uh, of the weight is there and distance will be covered before coming to rest you have to calculate assume the frictional force Friction force is always opposite to the motion, and that will be equal to 5% uh, of the weight. Okay. Yeah. So 0 0.05 times weight, you can say. Okay. And the braking force is 10% of the weight. So use this and try to solve the problem.
can you tell me where the breaking force will will be in which direction what left side left hand side direction or right hand side direction so what is the left right okay um so fb will be equal to 0.1 times width okay so now the um pre body diagram uh, here is completed you don't need the normal reaction here even if you draw no not a problem but uh, friction force is given in terms of weight so you can ignore the vertical forces Yeah, I'll wait for a minute. You try to solve it. Five point three one. Uh, uh, no, five point three one kilometers uh, is not the correct answer. Um, see, the what they have given the distance it will cover before coming to rest means final velocity is zero, right? Initial velocity you already know ninety. KMPH final velocity is zero. So with this hint, try to solve the question. V is equal to zero. Yes, two twelve is the correct answer. Uh, Punya and uh, Pranjul. Yeah, if you just do the force balance here, what you will get? Um, Yeah. See, um, what are the? Is there any force in the forward direction? No, right. So basically, and you know it's a retarding because uh, braking is applied, and so all the forces are in the left hand that direction. So um, MA will be in this case will be in rightward direction. Okay. So according to D'Alembert's principle. Um, what you have to do is um, breaking force and frictional force uh, tree needs has the retardation or the negative acceleration. So the inertia force will act in the opposite direction because though we have A in this direction, it's a 
a he we have in this direction not in the front direction because it's a retardation deceleration or retardation okay so that is the reason ma is acting in this direction okay right hand side so ma will be equal to fb plus ff right fb is 0.1 times w ff is 0 0.05 w so it will be 1.05 times w okay is the ma mass is weight divided by g so w by g times acceleration is equal to 1.05 times w okay so from this you can actually cal cancel out this w and uh, acceleration is um, basically 1.05 times g um, this is 9.81 and uh, sorry, how much? Um, I have made it a little wrong. It's a 0 0.15, okay, times W. So let me correct it 0 0.15, 0 0.15 times G. So it's uh, close to something like mm, 1.47, you will get, okay, meter per second square. So this is the value of acceleration and now from the equation with a constant acceleration you know when v is zero u is um, given v square is equal to u square plus 2as so zero is will be equal to uh, 90 kilo kmph you can convert it into uh, meters per second so 90 into thousand divided by 3600 okay um, will give you 25 meters per second so 25 square plus 2 into acceleration is already calculated that is 1.47 but that is retardation so you should consider it as a negative minus 1.47 um, into 1 distance yeah so this will give you the distance um, 25 square is 625 divided by 2 into 1.47 will give you around uh, 212 meters okay so 212 is the correct answer in this case <clears throat> okay so um, just a short trick whenever you have let's say a uh, speed which is given in kmph you just multiply by 5 and divide by 18 you will get is in meters per second okay um or yeah of course you can do 1000 divided by 3600 ultimately you will get the same um because um, uh, it is just the ratio okay um okay because 1000 kmph if you multiply 1000 you will get in meters per hour okay and if you divide with 60 you will get in meters per minute again 60 meters per second so 1000 divided by 3600 will give you meters per second three zero 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 will get cancelled so you can say it says five by eighteen so generally five by eighteen if ratio you know you can quickly um, do the calculations okay and the reverse if meters per second is there and then you want to convert into kilometer per hour then multiply by eighteen by eighteen by five okay so this is just a small trick whenever you need faster calculation with less time you can just do it <clears throat> okay uh, anyone have any doubt in this so uh, one more scenario or one more problem related to the braking i'll give so that this concept will be more clear to you a car moving on a straight road straight level road Go 
moving on a stat level road. Okay, dead. For a total. 60 meters. After the brakes are applied, or after the brakes were applied. Full stop. Determine the speed of the car. <clears throat> Determine the speed of the car just before the brakes were applied. Just before the brakes were applied. Okay, full stop. <clears throat> if the coefficient of friction between the car tires and the road is and the road is 0.4 okay so they are asking you to calculate the speed in kmph okay the answer should be in kmph okay <clears throat> so try to solve this <clears throat> okay, you solve this question and uh, in the Yes, Abhishek, correct. 78 is the correct answer. Good. See, uh, okay, imagine this is a car. Um, and uh, the <clears throat> weight uh, weight of the car is acting downward. Mg. We have the reaction in upward direction. As you can say, brakes are applied. It's a decelerating, so this is the direction of the acceleration. Uh, so D L Lambert's force, imaginary force, will act in this direction. Ma. Okay. The um, velocity with which um, or speed with which car um, brakes were applied, which we have to calculate. Let's calculate. Uh, say this is the V1. We don't know as of now, and the frictional force will be in this direction, opposite to the motion. U R mu R. Okay. So this is this completes the pre-body diagram. <clears throat> Anyone have any doubt till this? So it's clear here mass times acceleration is equal to mu times the normal reaction and normal reaction is equal to um, you can say uh, mg. So 
mm will get cancelled so acceleration is equal to mu times g in this case okay as we don't have any other external force in the previous problem we had that um <coughs> breaking force or something okay so uh, so here we don't have <coughs> that and um Yes, so A is equal to mu times um, G. Mu is given as 0.4 and G is 9.81. So it's a 3.92 meter per second square is a constant acceleration with which it is going. Initial velocity, we don't know. Oh, sorry, we don't know. We have to calculate it. Final velocity, we know that is zero. Okay. So again, um, or let's call it as a U and V. V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. So V is um, zero square, that is equal to U square minus two times 3.92. Why? Because it's a retardation. Into the distance traveled is 60 because uh, the skating will be for 60 meters, uh, was for 60 meters. So yeah, if you just calculate, U is equal to under root of two into 3.92 into 60 you should get answer 21.689 meters per second multiply by 18 by 5 you should get it it's 78 kmph okay close to 78 you'll get answer <clears throat> okay others have not posted it um, any issue in this problem are you able to solve it okay yeah this is the first time we are uh, studying this um, breaking problem nothing different just the uh, the real numbers component uh, the the real numbers force component direction is changing all other things are more or less same okay i'll give one homework question to you okay so because again related to the breaks uh, you have to try on your own so that it will be um, this concept will be come clear for you guys okay okay so no i will explain no problem um, <clears throat> okay listen carefully uh, just give me a minute i'll drink water Yeah. So in this question, uh, they have mentioned uh, a car is moving on a straight line, um, and I skip for total sixty meter apply after applying the brakes. So it's we applied the brakes, but um, so but suddenly the car will not stop. It will uh, skid for um, some some distance, and that distance here is sixty meter. They have given okay. Um, determine the speed of the car just before the brakes were applied. Okay. Um, if the coefficient of the friction between the car tire and the road is 0.4. So uh, this is the car moving in right to right side direction with certain velocity V1, which we don't know and have to calculate it. And after applying brake, it travels a distance um, of 60 meters and then it stops. So final velocity is zero initial velocity we don't know okay so v, v square is equal to u square minus 2s in this equation final velocity is zero initial velocity we have to calculate u square minus two times acceleration into the distance and here we don't know the acceleration okay sorry the deceleration or the retardation because our speed is reducing we should call it as retardation so the a also value we don't know as of now so but this equation you have where you will get u square is equal to 2 times a into 60. So you will be equal to under root of 2 times a into 60. Okay. So once you're able to calculate the a, the problem is solved. Okay. So in order to calculate a, what we are doing is we are um, applying the real numbers principle here. Um, that is uh, total force in the horizontal direction is 0. So in the right hand side, we have mass times acceleration force. In left hand side, we have frictional force. Okay. Um, frictional force is mu times r. And um, the DLM force is a mass times acceleration. And you 
from the vertical equilibrium uh, equation, you know that R is equal to mg. So you can replace R with mg, mm will get cancelled, A will be equal to mu times g. So mu value is 0.4, g is 9.81, you'll get 3.92 as acceleration, just put it here, you'll get the value of u. Okay, so more or less in these kind of problems, you have to get the acceleration from the um, D'Alembert's principle, okay, and uh, um, the distance traveled and all you can find it by using um, either uh, this equation or you can also apply the work energy principle, okay, um, whichever you will, but yeah, this is more simpler. In last class, we have studied more problems on work energy and uh, impulse, so today I'm covering more on this uh, uh, applying equations of kinetics and uh, um, applying equations of kinematics and also the um, the elements principle, okay? I'll give one last question, which will be for homework. We'll not study now um, regarding the breaks and you have to solve it and uh, come up with the answer, okay? It's a link question. A car traveling at a speed of 70 kmph suddenly applies brake and halts after skidding 50 meters full stop determine Part A, or first part of the question is um, time required to stop the car. And uh, second one is coefficient of friction between the tires and the road. Okay. Take this question for homework. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you the answers and you can match it later. The answer is 5.143 seconds for the time. Okay. And uh, so it will be, this will be the time required to stop the car and coefficient of friction is 0 0.3854. Okay. okay. So write it down and uh, it's not that difficult. I think you should be able to solve it. If you face any difficulty, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me or you can just post this question in the group. Someone will help you. Okay. Okay, uh, everyone has written it. Can I move towards next slide? Okay, um, we have, um, we'll solve later questions on the work energy principle. I'll try to uh, take some more questions with uh, DLM buts, okay. Um, we have taken few, uh, I'll take some questions with the inclined, um, plane so that uh, you will be able to handle those kind of problems as well. Okay, can I move towards next slide? It's okay. Take a question. A body weighing 300 Newton. The rest on a horizontal table. We'll 
table 1.2 meter apart from the edge is attached by a string to a string to a 30 newton weight which hangs over the edge over the edge the coefficient of friction the coefficient of friction between the three hundred Newton body and the table is one by sixteen. Find the acceleration of the system. Find the acceleration of the system. and the time required to and the time required to fall over the edges okay let me uh, explain it through a diagram we have a 300 newton block resting on the surface <clears throat> we have another block here okay Let's call it as W1. This is W2. And it is 30 Newton. Little bit tricky question. Okay, I'll repeat it. Listen carefully. A body of weight, weight uh, 300 Newton is resting on a horizontal surface of the table, which is 1.2 meter apart from the edge. Okay, so this distance is 1.2. Okay, um, is attached to a string to a 30 newton weight which hangs on the edge. The coefficient of the friction between the uh, 300 newton body and the edit table is 1 by 16. Mm -hmm. Find the acceleration of the system and the time required to fall over the edges. Try to solve it. <clears throat> Acceleration system and time. Acceleration is uh, um, time. Acceleration should be in meter per second square and time is in second. Uh, Abhishek, uh, no answer is uh, not correct. Can you check again? Spend some time. Uh, 
Um, no, because the answer is not correct. No, something is wrong. Check, check once again. See here they have given us the distance. Okay. And uh, the distance will help you to calculate the time. But uh, uh, in order to calculate acceleration, as I said, you have to use the DLM principle. Okay. So these are the two things. Weight is 300 Newton. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll go to the next slide and uh, start drawing the free board diagram so you can under understand it. So it's a 300 Newton body, uh, which is W1. A normal reaction, let's say R, and uh, frictional force is in this direction. New times R, acceleration of the body is in this direction. So mass times acceleration M1A is in the left hand side direction. Okay. So R is equal to weight in this case, that is 6300 Newton. Frictional force in this case is 1 by 16 into 300, which is close to 18.75 Newtons. Okay. Uh, yeah, Punya, your answer is close. You are close to the correct answer. Uh, Second digit, yeah, 0 0.3 is correct. 0 0.33 is the correct answer. Okay. Um, so frictional force is 18.75. And uh, yeah, if you apply the equation to equilibrium, mass times acceleration is equal to. Um, Frictional force. Yeah. So, uh, what is inertia force? M1A will be equal to. Sorry, here I forgot to draw one tension in the string, right? So, tension in the string will be equal to mass times acceleration plus frictional force and uh, fr so 300 divided by 9.81 into acceleration a plus 18.75 okay will give you the value of tension similarly the second body is like this weight is 30 newton acting downward we have tension in the string like this body is accelerating downward so inertia force ma is in upward direction M2A, let's call it as. So in this case, T will be equal to 30 minus 30, um, let's call it as, let's say maybe weight minus M2A. So that is 30 minus 30 divided by 9.81 into the acceleration. So this is equation number one, equation number two. If you solve this equation, uh, yeah, you will get the value of A. And the value is 0 0.3344. Okay. Uh, most of you have not got it correct. Um, so let me just help you with the solution. So you just equated these two equations. So 300 divided by 9.81 times A plus 18.75 is equal to 30 minus 30 divided by 9.81 times a okay so this you can take it to the left hand side a divided by 9.81 you can take common so 30 plus 300 is 330 right um so what you'll get is 330 divided by 9.81 times a is equal to 30 minus 18.75 Okay. So, what is the value of A? 
30 minus 18.75 um, divided by 300 into 9.81 okay so you should get it as 0 0.33 for something like this okay anyone have any doubt in this most of you have not uh, got it correct some um, majority of you uh, have answered uh, wrong so any any doubt in this is it clear to you all till this <laughs> okay so once acceleration is known uh, the distance is uh, is also known which is 1.2 meter you can calculate the the value of the time you can calculate the time okay so s is equal to ut plus half of eighty square how much distance it has to travel in order to fall down in order to fall down it has to travel a distance of 1.2 meter so and the yeah initial velocity is zero plus half of acceleration is 0 0.334 and time is what we have to calculate okay so from this t is equal to under root of 1.2 into 2 divided by 0 0.334 it gives you 2.679 seconds okay any any doubt Okay. If no doubt, then let's move towards some more questions. Uh, uh, the other type, uh, maybe I will. Um, okay. So here we have two bodies connected and I will give you one more question where the two bodies are connected, but it will be a different way. Okay. Let's take this question. Two weights. 80 kilo Newton and 20 kilo Newton are connected by a thread. By a thread and move along a rough horizontal plane okay, move along a rough horizontal plane under the action of force 40 newton Forty kilo newton. Full stop. Uh, applied to the first weight as shown in the figure. as shown in the figure the coefficient of friction between the sliding surface to the weight between the sliding surfaces of the weights And the plane is zero point three. Stop. Determine the acceleration of the weight.
Okay, determine the acceleration of weight. And the tension in the thread. Using D'Alembert's principle. Okay. Yeah. You have to use the D'Alembert's principle. It's a hint to you. Um, so we have a 20 kilonewton block. We attach to the 80 kilonewton block to a thread and uh, we are applying a load of 40 kilonewton. Okay, and it's a thread. Okay, I'll read the question again. I repeat it, listen carefully. Okay, two weights of 80 newton, 80 kilonewton and 20 kilonewton are connected by a thread and move along a rough horizontal plane under the action of force 40 kilonewton applied to the first weight as shown in this figure. The coefficient of the friction between the surface uh, and the weights is um, 0 0.3. Okay, determine the acceleration of the weight and the tension in the thread using the Alembert's principle. Okay, so two two problems here. We have to calculate the acceleration and again the uh, weight. Same same similar thing which we have done previously. I don't think it's a, a big uh, thing for you. Maybe let's take this for homework, okay? Um, because we have solved similar ones before. Um, just the arrangement is different. So let's better take it at homework. And uh, the answer I'll give to you um, is um, acceleration is 0 0.979 or 98 meter per second square, and time is. 7.99 or let's say close to uh, sorry um, tension they are asking right uh, determine the acceleration of the weight and the tension not weight sorry yeah tension tension in the string is um, 7.9 something close to this okay you should get so you can try this in during your free time so now we'll solve a couple of questions with the inclined plane so that uh, you will have good practice whenever uh, you will get these time these kind of problems okay so can you the answer the previous question yes 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 0 0.98 is the answer for um, acceleration and uh, uh, for the tension, it is 7.99 okay, kilonewton. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, take another kind of question. Okay. Um, a vehicle. We'll start with a simple question for inclined and then little bit complexity will add to it so that you'll be able to handle it. Uh, the vehicle is uniformly accelerated upon an inclined of of one in twenty from rest. And attains a velocity of five meters per second in fifteen seconds. Okay. Determine the tractive force. Okay, um, if the vehicle has mass
vehicle has mass of 2000 kgs and resistance to motion motion is 2000 newton okay solve it I'll wait for two minutes. Uh, vehicle is uniformly accelerated along an incline of one as one in ten, one in twenty. Sorry, um, one in twenty. Um, and uh, um. From rest and attains a velocity of 5 meters per second in 15 seconds. The attractive force you have to calculate if the vehicle has mass of 2000 kgs and uh, resistance to the motion is 2000 newton. Okay, so just for your information, this uh, incline what they have given is this incline. So 1 in 20 from 1 in 20 means uh, it's not, uh, let's say vertical divided by horizontal so here sine let's say this was alpha then sine of alpha is 1 by 20 okay so it's a perpendicular divided by hypotenuse if if it is given in this form 1 in 20 it is tan theta you have to take because perpendicular divided by base but it is given not in that way okay it's about the incline 1 in 20 So sine of alpha is 1 by 20. So sine of alpha is 0 0.05. Alpha will be close to 2.866 degrees. Okay. So with this, try to solve this question and tell me the answer. and wait for one more minute.
Okay, we got one question from Viri here. How sine alpha is one by twenty? Uh, see, um, they have mentioned here um, the about the incline. Okay, um, the question is like. The vehicle is uniformly accelerating upon a incline. So this is the vehicle. It is accelerating along this incline, um, which is incline of one in twenty. Okay, so one in twenty means one height for uh, let's say this twenty incline. Okay, so this is one and this is 20. This is how they have given. Okay, generally it is uh, slope is either given like this format A by B, uh, but in this case it's, it is not like that. Uh, the, they have given the other way. Okay, so you have to so in order to calculate this theta perpendicular divided by hypotenuse is the sine um, right and uh, that is why sine of alpha is equal to 1 by 20 okay is it clear with you uh, pranjul yes your answer is correct here the uh, final answer is 3647 okay newton Okay, let's solve it. Um, we have some question from Ab Abhishek and others uh, about this. Let's let's solve it in detail so that everyone will be clear. Okay, so let's draw the free board diagram. We have weight W, which is acting downward. Okay, acceleration is in this direction. Forces is acting in this direction. That is the uh, uh, you can say attractive force which is um, driving it. Uh, mass times acceleration will be in this direction. A frictional force will be opposite to the motion. Okay, so that's all we have. So this is W sine of alpha, W cos of alpha. Okay. Uh, so I think yes, this this has to be alpha. So with this, you will be able to solve it. Let me rub this um, other stuff uh, so that we can solve it here. So. Um, what is the value along the horizontal plane? You can say f is equal to along the sir, and w sine alpha will be there, sir. Along the ah, yes, sir. sorry, sorry, yes, uh, yes. This is alpha, means this has to be w cos of alpha, right? Um, the w sine of alpha, okay. Thanks for correcting. So, <laughs> f is in horizontal direction. On left hand side, we have two forces that is W sine of alpha and the frictional force, or let's say F minus W sine of alpha minus frictional force, which is um, 2000 Newton, that is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, um, so you can calculate F as W. Uh, or MA is which is 2000 into acceleration plus um, W sine of theta that is um, 2000 divided 2000 into 9.81 into sine of alpha that is 1 by 20 
plus 2000 right so like this you can get it the value of f which will be in terms of a 2000 a plus i think this will be 2000 if we take common um multiply by 20 divided no you cannot take common yeah or, or yeah it will be close to 2981 okay so yeah let's call it as equation number one here you have to calculate acceleration in order to could uh, get the value of tractive force f okay how will you calculate the acceleration yeah using the equation v is equal to u plus at okay uh, they have mentioned that from rest it attains the velocity of 5 meters per second in 15 seconds so 5 will be equal to 0 plus acceleration times 15 so this will give you the value of acceleration 5 by 15 meter per second square and put this here to get the value of f so f is equal to 2000 into 5 by 15 plus 2981 f will be equal to 3647.67 newton okay <clears throat> yeah so um, that's all Yeah, I hope it is clear to you all. If you have any doubt, uh, let me know. Okay, let me make it a little bit more complicated by adding another bit to it. Two bodies, weight, wing, Fourteen newton and fifteen newton are connected to the two ends of a of a light in extensible string. which passes over a smooth pulley okay the weight 40 newton is placed on a smooth inclined plane smooth inclined plane while the weight 15 newton while the weight 15 newton is having is free in there okay if the angle of the plane is 15 degree Fifteen degree determine acceleration of the system and uh, tension in the string. Okay, solve this. So, first question is about the acceleration, second is about the tension in the string. Okay. 
ओके फोर्टी न्यूटन वेट हियर इट इज फिफ्टीन न्यूटन वेट दिस फिफ्टीन डिग्री एक्सरलेशन इज इन दिस डायरेक्शन yeah solve this question okay the two bodies are has shown in this figure uh, we have 40 newton weight um, of block w1 and uh, is connected uh, let's say to the 15 newton through uh, this inextensible string passes over a smooth pulley pulley is frictionless here okay mm. the angle of the plane is 15 degree acceleration you have to calculate okay very simple question acceleration is yes abhishek 0.828 0.82 is the acceleration yeah 828 maybe yes and the tension in the string is um 13.73 yes correct okay good um so let me help you out um in this similar problem which we have solved previously uh, just the arrangement is different and the component of the forces will be different in this case nothing else okay so this is w1 this is w1 cos of 15 and this will be w1 sin of 15 okay uh mass times acceleration will be in this direction here it is accelerating in downward so acceleration is in downward direction so mass times acceleration is in upward direction okay so from the first figure let's say the first block w1 tension can be written as so this is the tension in the string Here the tension this thing will look like this. Tension this thing can be written as W one uh, sine of fifteen. Okay, plus mass times acceleration m one a. Yeah, that is forty divided by nine point eight one into acceleration. okay for the second figure the for the second block w2 tension can be written as 15 minus 15 divided by 9.81 into acceleration okay so if you let's say equate these two equations equation number 1 and 2 you will be able to get the value of a okay um W one is given forty, so forty into sine of fifteen plus forty divided by nine point into a is equal to fifteen minus fifteen divided by nine point eight into a. This will give you the value of a. Okay, so acceleration is equal to zero point eight two six. How we have calculated it? As I said, by equating. Forty sine of fifteen, okay, plus forty divided by nine point eight one. Okay, um, times acceleration. <coughs> And uh, that will be equal to the. Uh, Fifteen minus fifteen divided by nine point eight one times acceleration. Okay, so forty um, or e divided by nine point eight one. If you take common, fifty-five will be equal to fifteen minus forty sine of fifteen. So acceleration is fifteen. Minus forty sine of fifteen 
in bracket multiply by 9.81 divided by 55 you should get it as 0 0.826 just check it and uh, yeah if you take put it into the any of this equation you will get the tension 40 sine of 15 plus 40 divided by 9.81 into the acceleration is 0 0.826 you should get 13.73 okay let me just calculate it the exact value um, Yeah, 0 0.8288, so 8 to 9, let's calculate, say it as 8 to 9, multiply by 40, divided by 9.81, okay, plus 40, sine of 15, 13.73, yes, Newton, meter per second square, okay, I hope this question is clear to you all. okay um i'll give you one question for homework you try it okay it's a bit a bit lengthy question um uh, <clears throat> on the similar approach okay um you can try it later at home mm. uh system of two connected bodies a and b as shown in the figure is released from rust determine first tension in the string And uh, velocity of the body B after body A has tra A has travels two point five meters. is equal to 0 0.3 mm, just a minute okay uh, so figure I'll draw you try this later mm. we have 40 Newton block like this. Okay, here we have one pulley. So this pulley, it is connected to like this to the another pulley. Okay, and uh, that another pulley is like this, and uh, is connected to a weight like this, hundred newtons. Okay, this is how the system will look like. So 
okay so this is a d you can say the db okay yeah solve this for homework you can try it uh, later the tension in the string is um, Um, 42.5 Newton okay and uh, velocity of body B is um, 1.92 meters per second um, yeah. so these are the answers for it you can solve it uh, during your free time okay Just little bit different arrangement problem is more or less same mu is equal to 0.3 yeah i think it's already given to you mu is equal to 0.3 okay i hope you will be able to solve it Let me check any other question before we jump into the work energy principle problems um, <clears throat> yeah okay one more question we have uh, let's solve it now two blocks of weight 100 newton and 80 newton are placed on are placed one after the another and touching each other okay 100 newton and 80 newton blocks are placed one after the another and touching each other on an inclined plane of 30 degree on an inclined plane of 30 degree the coefficient of friction between the heavier block and the plane is the coefficient of friction between the heavier block and uh, the plane is point two and the uh, and that between the lighter block and plane is Point four. Also, find the acceleration of the system. Find the acceleration of the system. If the lighter block leads the downward motion. also find the force of contact between the two blocks stop the system is released from rest okay a little bit big question we have figure like this okay um one block is like this 
another block is something like this okay um this is an uh, 80 newton block and uh, this is an the 100 newton block okay so a block of weight eight, eight um, 100 newton and 80 newton are placed one after the other and touching over each other on an inclined plane of 30 degree the coefficient of the friction between the heavier block and the plane is 0.2 so here if you call this as a w1 and this as a w2 w2 so mu2 is 0.2 and the mu1 is 0.4 okay mm. Find the acceleration of the system if the lighter block tends uh, the downward motion. Also find the force of contact between the two blocks. Okay, so two questions here. One is acceleration, which is in meters per second square, and the second one is Fc, which is contact force. And uh, yeah, that should be Newton. Okay, I'll give you two minutes of time. Think on it, draw the freeboard diagram and solve it. Okay, uh, post your answers once you're done. Okay, uh, we'll have one more question on this, which is again interesting, like this. We have solved simple questions a little bit before, so that you should be able to handle this. I'm increasing the complexity slowly, so should be able to handle it.
Okay, let me help you out in this. Um, starting with the free body diagram of a smaller block. Okay, um, something like this. This angle is 30 degree. So let me draw the forces now. We have weight acting downward, that is 80 Newton. We have normal reaction like this, N1. Acceleration is in this direction. So MA force will be in this direction. The FC force will look like this. Block is sliding downward. So frictional force will be in upward direction. Okay. Mu1 N1 is the normal reaction. So weight will have two components. W cos of 30 and W sine of 30. This is also 30 degree. Uh, acceleration. No, Pranjul, something is wrong. Please uh, solve again. Maybe some small mistake you have done. Um, yeah. So this is the free board diagram of the first figure. Second figure looks similar. Little bit bigger block. M2A is in this direction. This is called as M1A. Weight is acting downward, that is 100 Newton. 100 cos of 30. 100 sine of 30. This is N2. Um, FC will look something like this. Okay, FC. And uh, mu2 R2 will look something like this. Acceleration of the body is still again in the same direction. Mu to N2, let's call it as N2. Okay. I hope free body diagram is clear to you. If free body diagram is clear, then there is nothing else in this problem. Very simple. Okay. Uh, from the first figure, what, what you can take if you calculate the equation of equilibrium, if you use the equation of equilibrium along the horizontal. Um, plane fc plus w1 sine of 30 minus mu1 r1 mu1 n1 should be equal to the mass times acceleration m1a correct so mass m1 is how much 80 divided by 9.81 times the acceleration has to be equal to FC plus W1 sine of 30. That is um, 80 um, into 0.5 minus mu1 R1. So mu1 N1, 0 0.4 into N1 is uh, W sine 30. Sorry, W cos 30. So 80 into cos of 30, um, it is 69.28. And that is equal to um, 80 divided by 9.81 times acceleration. Um, how much it is 80 divided by 9.81? It will be 8.155 times acceleration. Okay. Let's call it as equation number one. Or can we further simplify it? Um, yeah. Let's simplify and write um, 8.155 times acceleration is equal to fc plus 12.288 let's call it as equation number one coming from the first figure let's create the similar equation from the second figure um yeah how it will look like the m2a it's m2a is in rightward direction so let's write it as 100 uh, divided by 9.81 now let's write it clearly first m2a is equal to 100 uh, 
um, sine of 30 okay minus uh, fc minus mu2 n2 i hope it is clear m2a is um, 100 divided by 9.81 into acceleration a that is equal to 100 sin 30 is 100 into 0 0.5 minus fc minus mu2 n2 is 0.2 into n2 is 100 cos of 30 the simplified version of it will look like as 10.194a is equal to 50 or let's directly write it 50 minus uh, 0.2 okay so this minus fc let's keep it as it is and plus it will be 32.68 this is the second equation okay if you just subtract 0.2 times 100 cos 30 from the 50 you will get 32.68 <clears throat> so if you solve them together okay two equations two unknowns uh, if you just add them, what will happen? 10.149a is equal to minus fc plus 32.68. This will get cancelled. So you will get the value of a. a is 12.288 uh, plus 32.68 divided by 8.155 plus 10.1499 and it is equal to the um, 2.45 meter per second square just check it okay so most of you have got uh, not uh, get this answer uh, all your answers looks incorrect so please check and uh, confirm if you are able to understand it or not Okay, any doubt in this? Is it clear? Yeah. yeah, if acceleration is known, then just put into any of this equation and get FC. Okay, what was our equation? 8.155 times acceleration is equal to FC plus 12.288. 8.155 acceleration we just calculated as um, 2.545 is equal to fc plus 12.88 so you can just get fc from it and that is 7.69 eight newtons okay <clears throat> i hope it is clear to you all if any doubt feel free to ask How much is the acceleration? Um, 2.45 meter per second square. Any other doubt? Okay, we got one question from Rishika here. Um, why did FC has been subtracted in case of second block? Okay, see, <clears throat> what is FC? FC here is the force of contact between the two blocks. Okay, so basically, if um, these two blocks are there, which are in contact, the second block will act, will apply, because of the second block, FC will be like this on the first block right and because of the first block fc will be acting like this on the second block so the direction is different in both the cases Rishika. okay um 
so fc is directing in this direction and uh, m2a i'm calculating so that is the reason i have subtracted okay um, so if you apply summation of all horizontal forces equal to 0 so m2a plus fc plus n mu2 n2 minus 100 sin of 30 equal to 0 you will get okay and this is just the simplified version of it m2a is equal to 100 sin 30 minus fc minus mu2 n2 that's all okay which i have directly written okay good um if no other questions then uh, let me i'll i can move to the next slide otherwise yeah, yeah abhishek is typing something you have any doubt abhishek no, okay um i think we have some more time let's uh, solve one last question maybe in tomorrow's session we will work on the problems related to the work energy okay um I'm also posting some problems in the group uh, in, during your free time, try to solve it and uh, I'll also post the solutions as well. Okay, let's take a question, a uh, Bob. Of 2.5 meter pendulum. describes an arc of a circle in a vertical plane if the tension in the cord is two three times if the tension in the string is three times the weight of the bob. For the position shown in the figure. Uh, the figure find the velocity and the acceleration find the velocity and the acceleration of the bob in that position okay um <clears throat> yeah Solve this question and then maybe we will end the session. I'll repeat a bob of 2.5 meter um, pendulum is described by an arc of a vertical plane. If the tension in the string is three times the weight of the bob, okay, so it's a T is equal to three times W. For this position, okay, they are asking the velocity and the acceleration of the bob so acceleration is a velocity is the v Yeah, um, let me help you out with the free body diagram first and so it will be clear to you all. Let, let's uh, draw the free body diagram. At this position, if you see uh, something like this, we have uh, the um, 
the rod, uh, sorry, the thread. And this is the tension in the thread. And this is our uh, weight component. That is, let's call it as a W cos of 30. Okay. Um, so it's like rotating um, with the fixed axis, you can say. And uh, let's say this is the velocity direction. Mm. Um, velocity and acceleration um, yeah assume that it is coming downwards now from 30 degree because yeah it's at this location so it is coming down so you can say this as an inertia direction rather okay inertia force that is um, mass of this block but in this case the acceleration will be the tangential acceleration okay we studied the in fixed axis rotation what is tangential acceleration what is normal acceleration okay this is just an application of it and uh, so acce normal acceleration component will also be there and uh, the inertia force because of it will look something like this okay this is mass times normal acceleration so it is w divided by g times tangential acceleration and this is w divided by g times normal acceleration okay again we have an horizontal component of the weight which is w sign of 30 okay so this is also 30 degree <clears throat> okay so this is how the freeboard diagram will look like tension in the string is three times the weight and the length of this is 2.5 so now i think after applying the equations of the equilibrium you should be able to solve it in order to get the velocity and then acceleration you can calculate using the other inputs Okay, um, yeah, uh, we have already exceeded the time. So maybe what you can do is we'll continue with this problem in the next session, in the tomorrow's session. Try to work on it and uh, we will continue it in the tomorrow's class, okay? Um, so I will keep as of now for homework, but uh, we will take this question in the beginning of the tomorrow's class, okay? And then we'll study other problems. So, yeah, uh, if you are um, able to solve it, it's well and good. Um, velocity is 7.23 meters per second. It should be plus or minus in this case, depending on which direction um, it is there. Uh, and uh, should get this value, uh, plus or minus 7.23. And the acceleration will have two components, AT and AN. Um, and those you should get like this 4.905 meter per second square and uh, 20.93 meter per second square okay so you can match your answers with this and if you are not able to solve it's not a problem we will uh, start with this question in the tomorrow's class okay so as of now that's all we have um, we already exceeded five minutes we will end our session here and uh, we'll continue again tomorrow uh, morning so tomorrow morning the plan is uh, we will solve some questions on uh, this work energy um, principle okay i'll give some in uh, some more um, information about the collisions uh, we have studied collision but um, um, the a little bit of explanation is still there i feel which i should give to you uh, and uh, yeah and if time permits uh, we will study the vir virtual work concept okay yeah so that's all from my side today uh, thank you all for joining this uh, class and let's meet again tomorrow tomorrow i'll upload all the presentation uh, in the dry location so you will be able to access it thank you bye good night